We began by discussing the five different aspects of food accessibility given to us in the Invent It 2020 Challenge Packet. After discussion and general research, we decided to focus on the issue of food waste during distribution. We believe that limiting food waste during distribution allows for more food for distrib distributors, in turn increasing accessibility to the public. We looked at the different steps in transportation, specifically that of produce, and decided that the, the most damage was done during truck transportation. We saw that current packaging caused a lot of damage, so we decided to create a new form of packaging for produce and other foods during transport. The FAO, or the Food and Agriculture Organization's definition of waste includes all losses between harvest and the consumer, so commodity balance data can be calculated by the level of imports and exports. Total wheat exports in 2011 were 182.9 metric tons, but imports were only 178 metric tons, suggesting that 4.9 metric tons were lost in transit. An article by the FAO says, insufficient attention appears to be paid to current global food supply chain losses, which, is pro which are probably substantial. Even though the statistic about the wheat is about 10 years old, the problem of food waste in transit has not been addressed, making the issue very relevant. As you can see by these images, the current packaging is quite unstable. The bottom left, left image here is an example of a pallet defect that would have damaged produce and caused hassle to repair. The other images show that the cardboard boxes on the wood pallets are wrapped only by saran wrap. This configuration leads to load shifting, where the entire stack of boxes moves and falls due to truck movement, which is another large destroyer of food products. Because of these issues in food transportation, we decided we wanted to create a better container in place of the current packaging. To build upon the traditional current wooden pallet, we decided to make a shipping container with five plastic surfaces, four walls, and a base. The walls will have a cross-hatch design. On the corner of each of our boxes on the base will be retractable pegs that come out with gravity. When the box is placed on a surface, the pegs will retract. As the box is lifted, the pegs will come out. When the boxes are stacked on top of each other, the pegs will fit into holes on the top of the corners of the box below. By using plastic, the crate is more lightweight, durable, and reusable than wood pallets. The crosshatch system on the walls allows airflow while still protecting the products. The pegs allow for sturdy stacking of the boxes, preventing load shifts. The pegs also enable the boxes to be stacked with more stability in a shorter amount of time than the current warehouse process, increasing warehouse efficiency. We modeled the dimensions after the traditional pallet width and length, which is 48 inches by 40 inches. Then we made the height a perfect yard, 36 inches. We designed the measurement ratios and overall model from smaller crosshatch crates that are used to hold craft supplies and household items. We added crosshatches to reduce the amount of plastic used, even though it is recyclable regardless. We planned for the walls to be 4 inches thick, leaving room for the attached pegs in the corners to be 2 inches in diameter. These pegs are located at the bottom. They retract when force is applied on them from the bottom, otherwise they stay out. The holes that the pegs will slide into are located in the top corners of the crate and are slightly bigger than 2 inches in diameter, so the pegs slide in smoothly. The next step in our process was to create a 3D model of our crate. We decided to do this on a 3D drawing site. We started by creating five rectangles with the dimensions we decided on in the sketch. We then aligned them to make the crate. We didn't put the crosshatch design on this model because we did not have the time or resources. We made holes in the top corners that, in theory, the pegs would slide into. Our idea for the peg originally came from the mechanism of a pen. As you can see in this discussion, we were looking at how the bottom of a pen drops when it is flipped over, but retracts when set against a flat surface. Here are the models we ended up printing off. As you can see, they would stack on top of each other like this. And they also have four holes right there where the pegs would slide into. We were unable to make pegs on the bottom part of this model because it was such a small scale it would be difficult to implement the complex mechanism. So instead we created a larger version of the peg to show how it works. So here it is. This would be the corner of the box with the hole right there. So basically how it works is when the box is lifted into the air the peg falls out like this, and when it is set back down, the peg goes up. Basically, this works because in the white piece, we made a bigger hole here with a smaller hole here on the bottom, 
and then the red piece has a larger surface that catches on the smaller hole and then the smaller surface that's allowed to slide right through. When we were testing, we found that we had made small errors in the making of our 3D model and it was difficult to align the pegs by hand. We found that these difficulties could be solved or didn't accurately represent our true invention design. After having completed a rough test of our invention with our 3D models, we then presented our invention to our STEM class. We explained what specific problem we are looking to address and then showed them our crate and how it was different from current forms of packaging. After our presentation, they completed a Google Form survey in which they could provide their feedback. When reviewing the responses from our fellow students, they asked questions such as, does plastic have the durability of wood and others? Do you have a solution if the pegs break? What is the environmental friendliness of the product? How would companies receiving products like the invention? Is it cost efficient and is cross-hatching susceptible collapse? They also provided ideas and comments like collapsible walls so that workers won't have to go all the way in to get the goods inside. The shipping industry has been around for a long time. It'll be tough to convince people to switch. We even had a received a student who had provided that I've worked in a warehouse and I have seen firsthand the amount of products that are damaged. Using saran wrap was difficult and second, wasteful. Pallets are also easily broken and splintered. It's unbelievable. After reading through all the responses, we took the time to discuss and research how we might address concerns and which ones we should focus on to improve our invention design in the tweak it phase. After sharing our idea with peers, we received feedback. From that feedback, there were many that we chose to implement into our design. We then sketched a new design after hearing what people had to say. As mentioned previously, many asked about its environmental friendliness and if users would have to just throw it out if a peg broke. We decided it was important to state that the plastic is recyclable and if a peg breaks, the crate can be melted down to create a brand new one. Another important comment that we received that we had not thought of was because our sides weren't removable, the products would have to be dropped in from the top, which doesn't help prevent damaging. We then made the sides removable. They can slide out along the grooves if pulled up, but stay in any other time due to the shape of the grooves. This not only helps with loading because products can be loaded in from all sides, but if a side gets broken, it can easily be replaced by sliding in a new one. This also makes storing the crates more efficient because the sides are now all the same dimensions and can be removed and stacked in smaller spaces. In order to make this side stackable and easily replaceable, we revised the dimensions of the overall crate, changing it to be 48 inches by 48 inches by 36 inches. As for the problems that didn't involve the design, we researched the durability of the plastic and cost effectiveness. We found that plastic was even more durable than wood, which is why it can be reused so many times. Because it can be reused so many times, it's worth the high initial cost. We are introducing new crates that are used in the transportation of food products. Current forms of packaging are poor in that they are inefficient and can cause damage to machinery and the products that they are transporting. Damages to machinery, load shifting, and rejected loads all contribute to the inefficiency of transportation and the spoilage of food. Our crates are made of durable plastic so that they are reusable and don't damage products like wood pallets that splinter and have sharp nails. Retractable pegs and forklift compatibility allows for the crates to be easily stacked, which stops load shifting and improves efficiency. Its crosshatch sides allow for ventilation while still providing coverage, and removable walls allow for workers to load the base easily, and should a certain components of the crate become damaged, only that component would need to be replaced rather than the entire thing. With a decrease in damage and inefficiency during transportation, there's a potential for cost reductions or savings. Not only will food shippers benefit from implementing this new form of packaging during transportation, but addresses the ever-growing problem of food inaccessibility. The improved packaging will lower the amount of food waste and loss, allowing for more food for food distributors and the public. Okay guys, say bye to the vlog! Bye, <laughs> bye, 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 bye.